I'd like you to go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Again, if you're watching online, we're so glad that you're joining us here today. There's a Bible app. It's a free app. It's called YouVersion. If you're in the room and don't have a Bible, highly recommend it. It's on every smartphone or tablet device you have. If you like the old paper Bible, that's okay too. And we need a get you one if you need one as well. So Luke chapter 10. As I said before, we're in a series called It's My Life. It's my life. Look at somebody and say, it's my life. My life. My yeah, life. Oh yeah. Each one of us have been given a tremendous gift from God, and that is called our life. And you hear me say this a lot. It's our job to surrender our life to Jesus Christ and to say, God, it's not my life, it's your life. So you might say, well, Pastor, why are we doing a series called It's My Life then? And what I've been saying is the same thing. It's because it's for this life we will give an account it is a gift that God has given us. And one day we will stand before God and decide how we manage our life. We will give an account for that. And how we live out our life, I'll say it again, how we live out our life is a testimony of who we really believe God is. And everyone around us is watching and will see if we truly believe what we say and what God's word says. How we choose to live that out is absolutely important. Life happens. Can you just admit that? Sometimes simple, broken people will make simple, broken decisions and impact our lives in terrible ways. And we can't control that, but we can always control our response. It's my life. It's not what my, my mom did or my dad did. It's not what my spouse does. It's not what my boss has done or teacher or coach or whoever from your past has hurt you. At the end of the day, we have to make the decision that we're going to say, no, it's my life. I'm going to take ownership, and I'm not going to let something from the past or someone in the present control the future that God has for me. And if you haven't been able to make it, I highly encourage you to go back to our website, watch this series. Um, week one, we talked about slowing down and how we all need to learn to slow down in life. It goes so fast. And I gave you the one key. And I said, if we do this one thing, church, if we want 2021 to really be the year we claim this, if we do this one thing, it's going to make all the difference in the world. And every one of you here and every one of you watching are doing it right now. It's called the Sabbath. I say, Sunday, I'm going to make it a priority to be worshiping God with his people, either online or in person. And make that a commitment. 52 Sundays a year. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be committed to that. And we mentioned that. Last week we talked about Rachel already. Today, we're going to give you one of the most important things too as well. I think this is probably the greatest struggle that I see and that I hear in life. And this is called less stress. Less stress. We live in a stressed out world. Rollo May is a well-known Christian psychologist. This is what he said. Listen to this. Stress is one of the most urgent problems of our time. Anxiety is now the official emotion of our day. And we don't have to look very further than our own world to see people who are struggling with anxiety. Maybe people in this room who are listening have struggled with that. There's so much stuff in our world that can cause stress, that can cause anxiety. And today we want to unpack how we can manage that. And get through this. Psalm 119, verse 143, says, Trouble and distress have come upon me, but your commands give me delight. We can't stop the stress from happening to us. Sometimes it's, it's completely out of our control. But how we choose to manage that is going to be so, so important. I'm sure many of you have had a chance to either see or, or maybe play a guitar before. A uh, guitar is a, is a wonderful instrument, it's beautiful, and uh, I, I was going to bring a guitar and I was going to play it for you, but you guys know I can't do anything like that, so it sounds terrible. But anyway, a guitar has something on it that's very important. It has strings. And, and those strings are very important to the sound of a guitar. Any guitar musician will tell you the strings are so important to the sound. But here's the thing about the strings. As you may know, there's a little thing on the side that will tighten them up. You can tighten them or loosen them. If a string on a guitar is too loose, it makes a really flat sound and it doesn't sound very good, right? So how do they do that? When they put the strings on the guitar, they tighten them. 
and they twist them, and they get them to the right amount of tension. But what happens, and maybe you've done this before, in a guitar, if you keep twisting, and keep twisting, and keep twisting, what happens to the string? Eventually, it's going to snap. Okay? Now, why do I say that? That's a lot of our lives. And, and, and God, I'm going to say this, God wants your life to be in perfect tune. And when you get that point where every one of those strings is perfectly in tune, man, that guitar sounds beautiful. And, and I think a lot of the problems we have in our life is because, again, we want the stress just to go away. We just don't want to deal with it. Welcome to planet Earth. <laughs> There's going to be stress. There's going to be anxiety. And, and if you're not experiencing that, I, I'm just going to say something. Maybe you're not really living. <laughs> right? Because maybe if you're a little too loose and you're not feeling stress right now, Maybe there's a problem with that. Maybe you need to tighten it up a little bit. But I know <laughs> that's not the case for most. And probably most of us in the room, myself included. I think my tendency is to start tightening and tightening and tightening until it gets too tight. And eventually, we don't see it coming, but that string will just snap on it. And, and, and then you'll have some consequences in your relationship. Maybe in your job. Maybe in your church, Right? So, so how do we do that? How do we choose to stay in tune? Well, I'm in Luke chapter 10, like I said, and I'm going to be in the 38th verse, and I'm going to read to you this passage about Jesus that I think is going to help us understand this idea of how do we live with less stress? How do we manage that to stay in tune? Verse 38. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened up her home to him. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Now, I just want to pause there for a moment. I want you to think about an idea. If Jesus were coming to your house... Jesus Christ walks in the door. He looks at you and he says, hey, I'm going to come over to your house, right? Can you imagine that moment? That many of you, when, when you have somebody come over to your house, it kind of causes a little anxiety, right? Oh, is my house clean? Is it dirty? I don't want it to be, you know, what, what's Jesus going to walk into, right? And, and so Martha's sensing that anxiety of, oh, Jesus is coming to my house. So we got, we've all had that point before. But Martha has made a mistake. And, and I'm going to say, make this statement and then I'm going to come back to it. And I don't want anybody to miss this. You might want to write this down. This is the mistake Martha made. Martha thought Jesus was a guest in her house. Martha thought that Jesus was coming to be a guest in her home. And to help you understand where I'm going with this, I'm going to give you two facts about guests. And again, you might want to write these down. These are two things that are true about every single guest that you ever have in your house. Here's the first one. We serve them. When guests come to our house, we serve them. We walk in the door, right? Hey, come on in. You open the door for them. Let me take your coat. Can I get you something to drink? Here's the bathroom. Here's a comfortable place to sit. Are, are you too hot? To, you know what I'm saying? When we walk into somebody's house and you're a guest, they're there. We're there to serve them. But here's the thing. Guests never serve. The moment a guest starts to serve, they stop becoming a guest. Let me play this out for you a second. You walk in the door of somebody's house and you say, hey, I'm glad you're here. Say, there, there's a sink full of dirty dishes. Can you go in there and start washing for me? How many of you go back to the house? <laughs> Some of you probably would. Some of you probably like, yeah, I'm going to wash the dishes for you. That's because you're hot. But, but it's kind of weird, isn't it? That's what I'm talking about. Guests never serve. And, I, and I'm going to make this statement. And, and I'm going to come back to it. God is never a guest in your house. Jesus is never a guest. Look at what he says in Matthew 20, verse 28. The Son of Man did not come to serve, but not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Martha thought Jesus was going to be a guest. Jesus is never a guest. Jesus doesn't want to come and visit you and be a guest in your house. He wants your life. And I think we make the mistake sometimes of thinking we can serve God. Like, I have something that I can give God. Like, I, I serve God by preaching a message. As if something that I'm going to say, God's going to be in heaven and go, Wow, Jeff, I never thought of that before. Thank you so much. Right? The God who wrote the Bible is not impressed by what I preach on Sunday. Can I just say that? All right? God is not impressed by us. 
This is a God who created the heavens and the earth, the stars and the sky. Do you think you could paint a better picture than that? I don't think so. This is a God who created music and song. And, and do you think we could write a song better than what God could do? What could I possibly offer God? And here's the point. I don't want you to miss, church. <laughs> There's nothing we can give God except ourselves. The only thing God wants is you and I. He doesn't want to be a guest in our house. But here's the second thing that we do, and Martha did too as well. And you might want to write this down. Guests don't stay. Guests don't stay. If you stay, you're no longer a guest. <laughs> you, you know the old saying, right, about, about guests and fish, that what they have in common? After about three days, they both start to stink, right? Now, you ever have guests to stay at your house, and after about three days, you're like, is it time to go home yet? All right? Maybe some of you have the same relatives I do. Don't look at them. Don't throw an elbow right now, okay? Proverbs 25, 17 says, Seldom set foot in your neighbor's house. Too much of you, and they will hate you. Good advice, right? Now, what, where am I going with this? Some of us like it when God is our guest. Some of us like it when God is like, oh, God, it's Sunday morning. Come on in, God. Yeah, I'll come to church and I'll sit. And I'll, oh, yeah, God, come on into my life. And then Monday morning comes and you go back to work. You go, okay, God, now, now you need to go back. Okay, God, go back over there. I'm going to go here and I'm going to live my life. And, and maybe when I go out Friday night, I, I, don't want, I definitely don't want God around then, right? So, God, you can stay over there. I, I don't want you to be around at that point. Or, or maybe I'm watching something on TV and it's probably a little up. God, I don't want you here now. God, go ahead and leave. You can come back now. Now, God, I'm in need. Oh, God, I, I have this illness. God, come here. Right, right. It's like a, like a little little dog, right? Come here, boy. Come here, come here, come here. Okay, sit, yeah, sit. Okay, now, okay, now you can go away. Right. That's how we treat God. And I'm going to say it again. God is never a guest. God doesn't want you to invite Him into your house. God wants you to turn over the keys and say it's your house. You live there. Jesus is never our guest. We can't serve God. We don't tell God to come and go. And I'm going to make this statement. What we do with Jesus is far more important than what we do for Jesus. I'm going to say that again. What we do in the presence of Jesus and with Jesus is far more important than what we can do for Jesus. And I see so many people getting distracted. By, I'm going to try to do all these things for God. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to do these things for God. Is there anything wrong with that? No. Except for when that becomes our focus. And we get distracted by that. And we can forget what it's like to be in God's presence. And unpack that more. Let's go back to Martha. Verse 40. But Martha was what? Distracted. Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. Can I say it again? Martha thought that Jesus was a guest in her house. And because she had that uh, misunderstanding, she was distracted. And I just want to ask you, what distracts you? When you come here every week, what distracts you? And, and the first thing I say is if you debate about it. If you ask the question, hey, should I show up Sunday morning? Can I help you something? You're distracted. Really? You want, you want you have a chance to be in the presence of the God of the universe. You have a chance to come and worship with people, brothers and sisters in Christ who love you. And you want to kind of debate whether you want to show up or not? You're distracted. And, and here's what Martha does. Martha does something that, that you and I both do. I know I do this in my life. I don't point any fingers. But this is what Martha does. Verse 40 again. The second part of that. And I'm going to read this with a little bit of emphasis added. She came to Jesus and asked, Lord... Don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. What's the focus? <laughs> me, myself, and I. When we get distracted, we're always the focus. Can I help you with something? We're never the focus. Jesus is always the focus. Jesus should always be the focus. And I'll just say this. I've been in the church my whole life. And I've been around Christians. And I've been in this camp too. So I'm not pointing any fingers. Please don't hear that. But there's a lot of people who are doing things in the name of Jesus that are actually doing it to serve themselves. And I'll just go ahead and make it personal. There's times when I've done that in this church. Where I wanted everybody, hey, look at Jeff. Look at me. Look at what I'm doing. Isn't this great? Isn't this awesome? I wanted the attention. I wanted the focus. That's what Martha's saying. You know why? Because she got distracted. 
She thought Jesus was a guest that she could possibly give anything to. And the Savior of the world is in her house. And look how Jesus responds in verse 41. <laughs> Church, don't miss this. He says, Martha, Martha. You guys remember when you were kids and your parents would say your name twice? <laughs> Meant you were in trouble. <laughs> Needed to get your attention. Martha, Martha. The Lord answered, You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed. Or indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. I'm going to say it again. What we do with Jesus is far more important than what we do for Jesus. So really the question we've got to ask ourselves today, we're, talk, we're going to bring back the stress and talk about that. But are you working for Jesus? Or are you working to be with Jesus? Do you know why Sunday morning is an optional for me? I don't show up here because I'm the pastor and you expect me to preach. I'm just going to let you off the hook. If I didn't show up to preach, somebody else would. And, and, and it might be better than what I had. Because <laughs> if I don't want to be here... What's the point? I don't show up because I do it because of what my Jesus has done for me and how I can love and show up. I want to show you something. Let me get this set up here. See, I think we get distracted. I'm going to do something. I'm going to walk you through this. This is so helpful for me, and I'm going to show you guys this. What I mean is we can get so distracted serving and thinking that we're doing something for God. So I have right here a blank piece of paper. Oops, that one's not the right one. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I have right here a blank piece of paper. There's nothing on either side of it. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write something on this piece of paper. Okay. Show it one more time. Blank, nothing on it, right? Okay. You can see online, watch. Okay. I'm going to write something on this piece of paper, and I want you to think about. It. You can even say out loud what I write. Now I'm a terrible artist. Okay, so you guys have to help me out. Okay. We're making fun. Now, I'm going to show it, and I want you to just think out, think in your head, don't say it out loud. I want you to think, what did I draw? Okay? I'm going to walk around and see a little better. Okay? Don't say it out loud, just think about what you see. Okay? Online? Hopefully you can see that. Okay, anybody want to take a guess? What do you see? Anybody want to shout it out? Anyone want to bring it? Yeah, what do you see? Yeah, Okay? Anybody see anything else? A cross? You're all nervous because you think I'm setting you up, right? Addition. <laughs> Could be next. Okay, now I'm going to let you off the hook. What I showed you was a piece of paper, right? Did anybody see the paper when I held it up? Or did you focus on what I drew? Now here's what I'm going with that. Here's what I'm saying. This is what stress does to us. Stress focuses us on one part, and we miss the whole sheet, entire sheet of paper. Here's what happens. Here's what I see all the time in life. I see a tragedy or a crisis come. Somebody faces something. Maybe they, yeah, It's very real. I'm not trying to downplay it. Maybe you get sick. Maybe you lose your job. Maybe it's smaller than that. Maybe you can't find your keys in the morning. Okay, Whatever causes stress in your life. And what we do is it brings our focus right to that one point. And we forget about the entire sheet of paper around us. Here's where I'm going with that, church. We serve a God of the universe who loves you, who created you. He holds the stars in the palm of his hand. Nothing takes him by surprise. So why does it do it for us? And when we do that, what we do, our, all our attention, our focus come on what we see, what we've been drawn on our paper. Can I just say it that way? That's where our focus comes, and that's why we get so distracted by what that is. And God doesn't want us to. And Martha got distracted by what she saw Versus who she was with. Because God wants to be with us. God wants us. He wants us to be in his presence. He wants us to see that. And so what we're going to do right now. Again if you got your notes. You're going to want to write these down. I'm going to tell you how we can stay in tune with God. Going back to the guitar analogy. So we don't get so tightly wound up with our stress that our strings break. Or we're not too loose that it just stays flat. I'm going to give you three ways that we can stay in tune. With God, And this is what Mary did, and this is what Jesus just said. Mary did what was important. Here's the first one that we need to do. And again, you might want to write these down. We need to stop. We need to stop. Just stop. 
Psalm 37 says, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. That word stop, in the literal translation of it, is to cease all activity. We just need to stop. Can we agree that we live in a world that's moving away from God, not closer to God? Yeah, have you seen that around lately? Have you been paying attention? Yeah. Anytime you need to change direction, we know the world's going this way. Anytime you need to change direction, the first rule is you need to stop. And then you need to turn. If you really want to turn your life to Jesus Christ, you've got to stop. You've got to stop and change directions first. That's why we talk about taking a Sabbath. You've got to stop. One day a week belongs to God. It doesn't belong to your job. It doesn't belong to you. One day a week says, I'm going to stop and I'm going to be holy towards God. I hear all the time people say things to me all the time. Pastor, I'm just too busy. I'm too busy to be part of the life group. You need to stop. You need to stop being busy and come be part of the life group. Pastor, I'm too busy to, to help out. Or Pastor, I'm too busy. You need to stop. You just need to stop. And you need to be there. And Jesus said, if we want to continue on, we want to stay in tune, we've got to stop. Pastor, I just can't stop thinking. Pastor, I just can't stop worrying. I, I keep thinking about what's going to happen now. How am I going to pay my bills? What's going to happen with my kid? What's going to happen with marriage? You just need to stop. You just need to stop. And I don't know about you, but when I try to manage my life, it doesn't usually go very well. And if things aren't going very well for you right now, you need to stop, right? You ever heard the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing and expecting a different result? Stop. You need to stop. You need to try Jesus. And here's the second thing we need to do. We need to sit. I know this sounds really profound, right? You need to stop. And you need to sit. Look at what Jesus says, or Mary, in verse 39. Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. So many times we want to be in the presence of God, but we won't get there until we stop and we sit. We stop and we sit. I want you to think for a moment about a person that you really admire. Okay, And this could be anybody. It could be somebody you know. It could be somebody famous. Maybe it's a movie star. Maybe it's your favorite author. Maybe it's your favorite athlete. I want everybody to think of somebody that you really admire. Are you thinking of them right now? Okay, online, play along. Okay, this is what I'm going to tell you. This week... At any time that you want, you get to have 30 minutes with that person. They're going to come, they're going to be in the room with you, socially distanced, of course, but they're going to have 30, you're going to have 30 minutes of their time. You can ask them questions, you can get to know them. That sounds like a pretty cool thing, right? How many of you would be excited about that? I would be. That's a pretty nice thing to do. Now, I want you to think about that time that you're with that person that you admire. During that time, do you think once you would check your, check your phone for text messages? You think you'd be like, oh, I'm sorry, I, I gotta go to the bathroom. Can you hold on for a second? I'm, I'm gonna take, you know, five minutes of my 30 minutes to go to the bathroom and come back. You probably wouldn't do that, right? How about if you got a call and you're like, oh, I'm sorry, I really gotta take this easy. Now, why am I saying that? That would be ridiculous. None of us would do that. If we were in the room with a person that we admired so much and got 30 minutes of their time, I'm gonna say something that's gonna kinda hurt. We do it to God all the time. We do it to God all the time. All God wants is time with you. He wants your presence. And we don't stop and we don't sit because we're so busy. There's so much else to do. God, I can't, I can't, I can't, I didn't have, I, re I didn't read my Bible today, God. God, I didn't, I didn't pray. Really? The God of the universe who created everything. I don't care who you thought of, God's about a million times better than whoever that is, okay? Even if it was me. If you thought of me, it's still, God's even better than me, okay? It's true. We need to take time to stop and sit with God. Psalm 95, verse 6, says, Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. To stay in tune in life, we need to stop, and we need to sit. I had someone from our church send me something, and, and before we should put it up there, I want to say this. I love it when that happens. Like people will send me stuff, and I absolutely love that for two reasons. One, what they're really saying is, Pastor, your message could probably get a little better. <laughs> Which is true. Which is true. I'm not offended by that. But the second thing is they're really getting it. And, and, and I love to see that. So this actually, this picture was sent to me. Just go ahead and put it up here. 
This was sent to me about a week or so ago, and I love it so much. I'm like, this is perfect. I don't want to share this with you. When life knocks us down, get up and turn to God. How many of you have been there before? Well, <laughs> whenever life knocks you down, you need to get up and turn to God. But how about this one here? When life puts you in a high position, kneel down and turn back to God. See how that is? Isn't that cool? I just thought that was great. That's what we need to do. The only thing we can offer God of value is me. And no matter where you're at in life, if, if you're at the low spot, rise up and reach out for God. And, and if you're feeling pretty good right now and things are going all this way, hey, that'll change. But remember who got you there and give Him praise and thanks for that. So my question to you that we need to think about, when do you sit before God? At what point in your week are you going to sit with God? For me, it's every morning. Every morning I get up and I sit with God. And I don't say that because I'm the pastor, it's my job, it's because I need to. It's my God, it's what I do. For some of you, maybe it's before you go to bed. Maybe you're a night owl. Maybe you just want to make that time. I don't care when it is. I don't think God cares when it is. Just make that time to stop and sit with God. And here's the third thing you need to do. If you really want to stay in tune, if you really want to have less stress in your life, we need to stop. We need to sit. But here's the third thing we need to do. We need to savor. We need to savor. Stop. Sit. Savor. Stop. Sit. Savor. Say it with me. Stop. Stop. Sit. sit. Savor. savor. Doesn't it just feel better when you say that? That's what we need to do. How many of you have ever, you don't have to answer this, but just think in your mind. If you've ever read something in the Bible and thought, I don't really get it. I don't understand what God's saying. I don't, I don't get it. And, and it's a real thing. And I can know it's a sense of frustration sometimes where people will say, I really want to get in the Bible, but I just don't, I don't understand it, God. I don't know what's going on. And what I always say is, number one, are you doing it? Okay? Are you consistently doing it? Are you in God's Word every single day? But the second thing that I think is important, too, is we need to savor it. Do you savor God's Word? Is it just something that you do to kind of check a box and, and move on with your life? Or do you really understand what He's saying? We need to savor it. Think about it in this way. When you go to lunch and you eat lunch, let's say you have this big, fancy, awesome lunch, right? Now you can do two things. You can just snark it all down and eat your food and move on with your day. <laughs> right? But, but when you eat a really good lunch, like here at Minerva's, I love lunch here at Minerva's, by the way. It's a delicious, it's awesome. If you just wolf it in, right, you're missing out. You gotta savor it. You, you gotta taste what the what the meat tastes like and, and, the, and the, the bread and all of that. You really gotta savor it. Friends, it's the same way with God's word. It's never intended just to be a box we check off and move on with our day. We gotta savor it. Look at what James says in verse 1, verse 25. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they've heard, but doing it. They will be blessed in what they do. Do you want to be blessed in what you do? Savor God's word. Learn how to savor it. And I'll say it again. If you're struggling still, are you reading it in a community with other people? That's why we have life groups. So you can come together. You can take a verse. You can look at it. We unpack it together. If you don't understand it, that's okay. That's how we learn. And we grow and we get better. But continue to do it. Savor it. Because again, I'll say it one more time. What we do with Jesus is far more important than what we do for Jesus. Jesus wants to have us. He doesn't want to have our stuff. He doesn't want to have what we can do. He wants us and our relationship with Him. So how do we stay in tune? We need to stop. We need to sit. We need to savor. Let's say it one more time. Stop. Sit. Savor. And is God a guest in your house? Is God something that you just want to come in when it's convenient for you? Or do you feel like you have something to offer God? If you have something that you can benefit Him? And I'll be honest with you, church. This is something that I have been working on really, really hard the past couple months. I think um, there's lots of things, lots of mistakes I've made as a pastor. I, I could give a hold of the message on all the mistakes I've made. But I think one of the biggest things that God's put in my heart, one of the biggest mistakes that I've made as a pastor of this church is being way too worried about Sunday morning. 
And here's what I mean by that. There's a lot of work put on the church. There's a lot of things that can happen. There's a lot of things to do. And when we launched, we had a great group of people that was doing it. Man, there was stuff going on all the time. And I was the most stressed out person in the world Sunday morning. And, and, and I just took a class recently where I, I learned a guy made this statement. He said, you know, on Sunday morning, the most calm person in the room should be the pastor. And I was just like, oh, man. That was not me. I was worried and I was anxious. And, you know, will the kids get done? Will the setup get done? Will the sound, blah, 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 all this stuff. I was just anxious. I was worried. And when we went through COVID and we, we went online for that period of weeks, God did a refining in my heart. And that's why things, if you look around here, if you've been here for a while, we scale down a lot. Part of that's because of me. Because part of that is God really got a hold of my heart and said, Jeff, there's nothing you can offer me on something like Besides you. And when you show up, it's not about the stuff, it's not about the tasks, it's about the lives of walking that door. And that you can love them. And Jeff, what I need you to do is I need you to be prepared to share God's word every Sunday. There's not a lot of gifts and talents that I have, okay? But one of the things that God has blessed me with is God has blessed me with the ability to communicate God's word and teach it. And I would say that's brag or feel it. But it's, it's not something that I... What, I... what I'm saying is because I've really, for the last couple months, been really focusing on that. And just saying, you know what, God, this is how, this is how I can serve you. And knowing that I can't serve God, but what I'm trying to say is, God, this is where you want me to be. And, and I'm going to quit worrying about a lot of this stuff. So where am I going with that? I've heard people ask questions like, hey, are we going to do coffee again? Like, like are we going to have coffee again? I'd love to. But I'm not doing it. Are we going to have a music team again? Like, we have a keyboard, we have a piano, are we going to do that again? I'm not doing it. Are we going to have kids again? Do we have a kids ministry? Are we going to do that again? Yeah, absolutely. I'm not doing it. And, and, and please don't hear that as a guilt or anything like that. What I'm just saying is, this is what God's called me to do. This is what I'm going to do. And as a body of Christ, all those things can come and be part of it. But the last thing I want to ask you, and it's up there, guests don't serve. Guests don't say. If you're here and you're part of Celebrating Anything, and, and you're a guest, we say welcome. We're glad that you're here. But if you're part of this church and this is where God's called you to be, again, going back to the guitar string, right? Where's God called you to serve? And not, not to serve God, but to create an opportunity for people to have a relationship with God. That's what we're supposed to do. And if you have no clue and you're like, Pastor, I don't know, like, what can I do? Come talk to me. There's lots of different things that we can do that we can talk about that you can help be a part of what God's doing here in the church and, and, and live that out. Because you got to decide, are you a guest? <laughs> or, or are you part of our community? Because guests don't serve. Guess don't stay in community. Is. Let's pray. God, I need your forgiveness for the times when I get distracted, just like Martha did. And I think somehow that you're some guest that we serve, or that, that you're some guest that you know we can come to you when it's convenient for us and then push you away when it's not. And God, I don't think I'm alone in that thought. God, I pray that every person in the sound of my voice, whether they're online or in this room, myself included, this week will just stop. I think there's some things that we need to stop doing. Maybe they're not bad things, but maybe they're not. They're keeping us away from you. We just need to stop them. God, whatever that is, put that in our hearts and minds. What, what's something we need to stop? God, each one of us need to take time and sit with you. God, I don't care if it's two minutes, five minutes, an hour, three hours. God, at some point during this week, every person who's listening to my voice right now, that they would stop. And they would sit with you. They would be in your word. They would be in prayer. Or they would be in community with others, God. And God, I pray that everyone in this room would take time this week to savor Maybe they go back home and they listen to the message again. Maybe they pull out their Bible and read through a passage over and over again. Whatever that is, God, that we would just savor your word. And we would understand that there's nothing that we can offer you, God, that you want, except for our lives. And God, I thank you for the people who are in this room or listening to our guests. We're so glad they're here. We want them to feel welcome. We want them to create an environment where they can connect with you. 
<laughs> but God, if there's people here who are saying yes, and, and this is my church, and I'm committed to that, God, I pray that you would put in their hearts and minds a way that they can serve. That they can give their gifts and talents to, to, to be you. God, you equip each one of us in different ways. And God, I think back to Rod and Tyler Holman, where, where maybe there's people that are listening that you're calling to, to go. And, and to be continue to build that network, God. Maybe to a different community, or maybe right here in their own home. I don't know. But God, we know that once we experience your love, once we stop and we sit and we savor, our lives are never the same. And we give because you love us. And just as Jesus says, you said the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve and give his life for many. May that be our prayer. That we would come and we would give our lives to the many. God, we thank you and praise you and ask all these things. In Jesus' name, amen.